Bulldogs with an 82 to 68 win over Saginaw Valley State. Joined by the head coach of the Ferris State Bulldogs, Kurt Westendorp. Coach, congratulations! Uh, you needed a win to keep your season alive, and your kids came out had a big second half uh, here for you in this ball game yeah, tonight. They, they fought their tails out the entire way. You know, we talked about you know all you're guaranteed is 40 minutes. If you want another 40, you have to earn it, and we we definitely earned it tonight. So they shared the ball so much better after that slow first quarter where we just kind of looked like we were stuck in the mud. They got it together. They gave each other little sparks, little bursts of energy, you know, that they gave each other with the ball moving and seeing a couple things go through the net. So really pleased with our performance. This is probably one of our better ones. That's a really good team in Saginaw Valley. You know, that's a team that, you know, they were ranked number 10 in the regional ranking. So hopefully we jumped at least one team with tonight, and now we know we got a few more teams that we got to jump um, because we haven't been really getting the respect that we think we would deserve in the regional rankings, but it's nice to see us step up, and when the game is on the line, you know, we took it to a team that team people thought was ahead of us. Obviously, uh, you got some big performances tonight. Caden Blanchard with 21. Adrian had 22. Uh, Mallory with 17 points. Really looked for her shot, hit some big shots for you here over the course of the ball game. Yeah, they did a nice job of recovering. I felt like we were a little tentative in the first quarter. I, I really did. I really felt like, you know, we kind of were running our offense slowly. You know, we didn't get any real surprises out of them defensively, which I thought we might. You know, so I think it really just took us a little bit to kind of find our groove. And then once we did and they started sharing the ball, you know, it wasn't like we were trying to just like, okay, we're just going to go to Adrian now. Or, okay, we're just going to go to Mal now or, or just Caden now. Like they shared it really well. And whoever was open was the one getting the looks, you know, aside from some of the drops that we kind of had to get Adrian going because they didn't have a great matchup for her with Zeriki in foul trouble. So she did a great job. But all of them, I mean, up and down that starting lineup, we played them heavy minutes because Saginaw plays their kids heavy minutes. And we're just really, really pleased to be moving on. Maybe talk about the play uh, on the defensive end. Obviously, uh, they have a dynamic backcourt, but uh, you really did a nice job of slowing them down here over the course of the ballgame. Yeah, it was it was okay in spurts, our defense. You know, really, we, we struggled to guard the ball screen a little bit in that first quarter and then again a little bit in the second half of not letting them get the ball to the paint. Um, but there was enough times that we, we didn't let it – we didn't let us making a few mistakes – really affect then the next plays because we were able to step up and then kind of get things corrected on the fly um, in the second half to really keep the ball out of the paint a little bit because you know Zariki is a heck of a player for, for us to hold her to five for 14 shooting like she's she's got a chance to be Gleak player of the year you know she's a really good player and for us to hold her down and keep her out of the scoring areas that was really good I mean she still got hers you know late because she's just a heck of a player um, but we did a nice job for the most part of not letting them get to where they got so hot that they got like a 10-0 or a 12-0 run in the second half, and we were able to keep scoring on our end of the court, so we had an answer for them every single time. Maybe talk about what it means to move back to the semifinals. I know it's been uh, some time uh, since the, these kids have had an opportunity to move on uh, here past the first round. I guess it has. I guess I haven't really thought about that a whole lot. Um, you know, I know in my experience here, you know, my two years that we were here before, we didn't make it out into the tournament, and then we made the championship game at Ashland, so that's what... You know, that's what hopefully is becoming the standard, but our league is so good, you know, that every year, you know, if you can make it to the final four of our league, you know, it's a big time accomplishment. So I guess you're right about these kids not having experienced that tournament atmosphere. Well, we get to go experience that tournament atmosphere and we'll see, we'll see who that opponent is, whether it's Wayne State or Parkside. Maybe you know, do we know? It looks right. like it's going to be Wayne State now, a final 70-65 to 65 over Parkside. Right. Uh, Grand Valley State winning uh, by 20, I believe, with four minutes left. So looks like it'll be uh, the Bulldogs taking on Wayne State down in Allendale coming up on Saturday. All right. No matter who we were going to play, it was going to be a team that we split with. So it seems like that's the way the GLIAC has gone this year. So we'll get we'll start getting ready for Wayne State tonight and go down to Allendale. This nice short drive. Hopefully we should have quite a few of our fans coming down there. You know, hopefully our guys win and they keep hosting so we can – steal a little bit of their fans maybe a couple times but our parents do a great job getting out and supporting so it's going to be a fun weekend we got to play our way into this thing so now we, we now we have a new task at hand you know we won't even really celebrate this one for 24 hours because we got to get to work pretty much right now on wayne state well coach congratulations get on the win and uh we'll talk to you again soon best of luck at the semifinals all right thank you so much